we talked about the Wagner game. What what was your best day on the field at four? Uh, I I remember that vividly. Um, it, it it was a game at CW Post, and I was a sophomore. Um, and my performance in that game, you know, and it, re remember we go, going back to you know how Skip treated me, you know my my freshman year. To have him after that game uh, sit the team down and appoint me a captain after that it was pretty special. Um, and I, I remember that game. So I, my first at bat, uh, I, I hit a home run. My second at bat, I hit a home run. Third at bat, I hit a home run. Uh, my fourth at bat, I hit a double off the wall. Uh, and I think if I if I remember correctly, I think I had eleven RBIs uh, in, in, in that game. And that'll be a game that I never forget. And yes, the performance was, was great. It, it, it was special, but what meant the most to me was everything I went through my freshman year with him for him then to respect me and my game uh, uh, enough to make me a captain as a sophomore, uh, you know, with great teammates and good leaders, uh, I, I think was a day that I will always, always remember and cherish. Bobby, 27 career home, home runs. Got a favorite? Yes. There, there, there was one um, against, oh gosh, it was either Dayton or Xavier. So I, the, both schools are from Cincinnati, both from Ohio. And I, I remember in, in this at bat, I had, um, hit a ball, which I thought was a home run down the right field line, but it was hit above the foul pole. And the umpire ended up, because it was hooking, and he ended up calling it foul. And I came back to the plate, and I looked at him. I said, Smile. I said, are you, are you serious right now? He said, Bobby, it was too high. I couldn't see it. I said, well, then why wouldn't you call it fair? Why, you know, this is a, we're, we're at home right now. You, you know, you're going to call it foul. And then the very next pitch, I think I hit probably one of the furthest home runs I ever hit in, in my life. You know, I saw it hit up um, Southern Boulevard, bounce in the street. And, wow. you know, I was rounding second base. I got home and the umpire said, glad I called that foul, aren't you? I said, no, I know it doesn't hit a home run. Are you crazy? <laughs> Call it the first time. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll always remember that one. 27 career home runs that rings a bell for me uh but unfortunately i was a pitcher so we won't go in we won't go into that uh what was the biggest win at fordham when i was there mm -hmm. hmm. oh wow that's a good question hmm. you know i i would say defeating richmond uh, who was the, the the best team in the conference uh, at, at the time when I was there? Um, you know, we were slightly under 500. Um, I think they were probably 15 games over 500, and they had a second rounder on the mound, Tim Stauffer, uh, that was pitching. They had a guy named Matt Craig at, at shortstop, who's a third round draft pick. Their catcher was drafted, and we just put together, you know, a a solid solid game where you know it showed our potential. Right. And I, I, I think my biggest regret, you know, at Fordham is, is we never got to play at least my class who's very, very talented. Uh, my teammates were, were spectacular, uh, never got to play to our potential, you know, injuries after injuries, Tommy John after Tommy John, um, a, a lot of it fell on, uh, on our class and just, you know, tough. I, I remember our freshman year too, and it was a game that we didn't win. Uh, but it was a game that we went down to play University of Florida my freshman year. <laughs> I remember going down. It was such a beautiful field that I got down after we were playing catch, and I just laid in the ground. and just <laughs> It was almost like a golf course. It's, it was nothing like, you know, with, uh, you know, Jack Coffee Field up uh, up north. I remember Skip telling me to get the hell up. What are you doing? You know, what's wrong with you? But we, I, I mean, we lost the University of Florida uh, five to three, and they had already played. It was our – you know, third or fourth game of the year, they had already played 20 games. And I was just so proud of, of what we did, you know, that we could hang with them, you know, for, uh, for that period of time. But those are the games that I remember. 
And and you just made reference to it about all the injuries that intervened. But it, was there one big disappointment in your time at Fordham on the field? Yeah, it, it, it was. You know, the, the the fact that again that we just didn't play up to up to our potential, whether it was uh, d- due to injury, whether we all just weren't clicking uh, at at one time. You know, and then uh, you know maybe one of my biggest regrets is is always that what if. Um, what would have Jason Conlisk and I would have stayed um, and not signed, we would have played our senior year together um, with, with that group. Would we have found it then? Um, you know, so sometimes I look back and say, you know, I, I missed a year, um, you know, 25%, right. Of, uh, of time being spent uh, with those guys who are, you know, forever my friends and brothers. And, you know, did, did I make the right decision? Any injuries while you were at Fordham that got in the way? Yeah, <laughs> I can say this now. Um, but yeah, I, I remember this was my freshman year. Um, it was in the fall and I was playing flag football um, out on the turf. Um, and with uh, one of our senior pitchers, Bobby Agger, and I caught a ball, dove for it and tore my PCL. Um Ooh. You know, I, I remember just limping back to Hughes Hall and then I couldn't get out of bed the next day because it hurt so bad. So they had to bring me uh, to my teammates said to bring me to the training room. And I, you know, kind of just said that I did it at practice that day, but it was a playing flag football um, at, at the time. So, yeah, it, it uh, I, I missed the rest of um, uh, the, the fall of my freshman year. And then the first couple of games of my freshman year in the spring, but I just wore a brace. And I remember uh, against Coastal Carolina, my first ever attempt at stealing a base, I went to go uh, steal it and then just completely tore it uh, right in the in the base path and then wore a, a brace uh, the rest of my freshman year. So, but never missed another game. Um. Of all the records that you hold, is there one that is most special to you? Um, you know, I, I would, I, I, I think this, the stealing the, the eight bases, uh, in, in the game because it was a, a close game, uh, because it was an NCAA record. I, I haven't looked it up, but I think maybe still is, um, you know, that's, that's for Joe and you to find out for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, you know, that was, was, what was special. You know, there's a, a, a lot of buzz around that and we went and played Xavier the next weekend and I'll never forget what they tried to to do to me. They were determined for me not to steal a base and they can't do this in the major league baseball anymore, but they threw over, I think it was like 15 or 16 times in a row to first base and actually picked me off on the 15th or 16th (laughs) (laughs) but you know that was that was special um you mentioned that uh, you didn't walk for graduation uh was that a disappointment um uh not not then if I would have been able to walk with my class and my teammates, um, it would have been more of a, a, of a disappointment. Do I wish I would have walked and, and experienced uh, graduation? Yes. Uh, do I think it, it, it's a disappointment? No. Um, more so that I didn't get to to play my senior year with my my best friends and and teammates. Which brings me to this. Uh... Faye Vincent, uh, once the commissioner of baseball, bemoaned the fact that really talented players have to make these life-changing decisions, potentially, Mm -hmm. coming out of high school, whether or not they get drafted, uh, or perhaps sign as an opportunity to sign as a free agent, go play pro ball, or go on to college, or and also signing as juniors and not as seniors and interrupting your college experience. He hated that idea. Yeah. Yeah. You you know, there's um, certainly been times I obviously uh, after pro ball or the reason I had to stop playing was, you know, due to an injury. So I often, you know, when it, 
when I was uh, down, you know, dur during that time, I often thought, you know, the, the all, all the what ifs and doubts creep into your head. You know, what if you wouldn't have signed? Uh, then what if you would have stayed for your senior year? You're drafted by another team, and then you're you're not in that situation to have to dive for for that ball. And are you hurt? Are you injured? Um, it, it, it you know, there's there's several moments in your life that are going to be life changing. Um, you know, that's uh, for for me, that was that was certainly one of them. You know, just uh, obviously changed the trajectory of my life in in whole. From you know, it, it's not just baseball, but affect where I am. Uh, today, right now, sitting in this office, you know, the fact that I have, you know, a, a wife and five children, all that happened because of this decision that I made in, in June of 2002. Um, so the grass is always greener on, on, on the other side, I think, as I've grown up and, and matured um, and get kind of experienced more, I don't think I would change anything that I've that I've done. You're inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2008. How did how were you told that you were going in? Uh, <laughs> uh, so I I, I received um, a, a phone call, and you know I I was a little I was confused, and people were confused because I graduated in 2008, right? So you had to typically you have to wait five years. Uh, so that would have been I would have first been eligible in 2013, um, but because they used my you know typical graduation date or what I would have graduated in 2003. Um, but when I got uh, the, the phone call, um, I was, uh, I was humbled. I was, I, I, I was honored uh, to be able to, you know, be, be thought of uh, in, in that category, especially, you know, being there uh, three years. So to have any type of, of impact like that, um, to be able to be included with with folks that are on the, the the wall there, not only from a baseball perspective, but just you know Fordham greats in general was a was a true honor. What do you remember about the day of your enshrinement? <laughs> uh, I, I remember Michael K hosted it, and he made a joke about me asking me if I would go into the booth <laughs> with, with, with him. But it was unique then because the inductees didn't get a lot of time to speak. So I was also humbled and honored that they asked me to speak, but I, I had to speak on behalf of everybody. Hmm. So it, it, it wasn't just everybody in my class that was, you know, being able to, to talk and, and thank people. I had to reach out and, and talk to every, everybody in my hall of fame class and make sure that I got their, um, you know, make sure I thank the right people on, on their behalf. Um, so it was a little bit of, you know, we, we talked about pressure earlier. It was a little bit of pressure not to screw that up for everybody else. Uh, so I'm glad they changed that now. Uh, but I, I remember, you know, I, I'm not going to name a, a, any names, but he contacted me after and, or no, you didn't, it was right after, you know, I, I gave the, the, the speech and, you know, he said, Hey, you forgot my wife. And I looked at his sheet of who he thanked that he had sent to me. She was not on, not on the list, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't throw him under the bus. I, I just said, Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. That's my fault. You know, uh, you know, it was, it was a basketball player on his all I'm going to say. <laughs> and, and all these years later, he's still sleeping in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if I would have lied? <laughs> wow. Uh, what are your emotions when you come back and see your plaque? Uh, you, you know, I've only been back. I think I've been back twice uh, to see it. And, and um, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty cool, you, you, you know, to be able to, to go back and, and see it. I, I've had more people, you know, who said, Hey, I've walked by Fordham and I've, I've seen it, you know, and that obviously, you know, gives you a, a feeling of, of pride. Um, but I've only had the only, twice or have had the opportunity to do it and it was you know to go back so Kevin Layton and I the baseball coach right now at Fordham uh, we played against each other so he was at Manhattan uh, when I was playing at at Fordham and then we played together in the New England Collegiate Baseball League after my freshman year uh, so to be able to go back and help him and talk to the team you know when I was in town for business you know I would just you know take the train uh, down to Fordham and I was able to do that a couple times and you know, kind of went back into the gym uh, and, and saw it. 
Um, I've spent a few weeks and months around the game of baseball in my life and in talking to so many people who have uh, this God-given ability to be able to play the game at the level in which you played, I would say to them, did you ever expect to be drafted by the team that drafted you? Bobby, at least 80% of the guys I've spoken to said, I never expected to be drafted by X. Did you expect to be drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates? No, no. As a matter of fact, I was, you know, deep inside, I was hoping, um, that my hometown team was yeah, was going to draft me. Uh, you know, they had called me the night before the draft and asked me if, if I would sign uh, in the third or fifth round. And I said, you know, what my agent had told me to is, you know, if it's for the right, you know, for the slot money, yes, I, you know, I, I would certainly sign. And then I was, I was really disappointed um, when they didn't. It, it would have been an opportunity to play professional baseball close to to home, uh, to my family and friends that uh, that I grew up with. Uh, but ultimately, very thankful that Pittsburgh gave me the opportunity to uh, to fulfill my my childhood dream. What are you doing now? Uh, so I, I work for a private equity fund uh, now in in Cleveland. Um, shortly after I I retired, so I got hurt, uh, tore my rotator cuff and labrum in 2006. Uh, had a surgery, tried to come back and play, couldn't. Uh, couldn't really do it, and you know, but file this under better be lucky than than good. I was giving the founder of the firm's son hitting lessons uh, in in the off season, and you know, told him that I went to Fordham. I I, I wasn't your typical jock. I did very well in school, uh, and he, you know, we kind of just had some some conversations, and uh, you know, he's, he said, "Are you giving any thought to private equity?" And I said. You know, not really. I learned about it from maybe a chapter in school, but I haven't been in school in, in six years. So he had me come in. And, you know, th th this is just an anecdote of, what, again, why I think baseball, you know, what, what, what I think it teaches you about life. So mm -hmm. I met with him and then the other partners wanted to have a lunch with me. And I I don't I still don't have a resume put together uh, to, to this day and, and didn't have one then. Um, but I went and sat down with the partners at the firm and they said, give me your background. I said, I went to Fordham, I majored in finance. I did very well in school, but I've been playing baseball for the last six years. And one of them looked at me and said, you know, so you've never worked before a day in your life. And I said, you play 140 games in 150 days and tell me if that's not work. I said, I learned time management. I learned how to work well with the team. I learned how to be a leader and I learned how to work well under pressure. So everything you've been doing in business, I've been doing on a different field for the last six years. And as those words came out of my mouth, I wanted to bring them back in, but I was. Oh, no, uh, no, no. That's a fantastic <laughs> answer. <laughs> well, I thought I just ruined my first ever job interview, Ed. <laughs> uh, yeah. They didn't teach me that, in, you know, in, in, in the minor leagues. Uh, but yeah, no, that was it, another it just, one of your, that's another one of your home runs. It, it, it was just something that I, that, that I felt deep down and, and, and to this day at, at the firm, regardless of sport. Um, regardless of division one, two, or three, if there are candidates that are equal, I will choose the athlete every day because I know what it takes from a competitive drive standpoint. I know what it takes from a time management standpoint to be able to, to balance your education and a full-time job in essence, in order to, to do it. And I just think sports teaches you so much about being successful. You know, today we don't, you know, have our kids play sports to try to make it professionally. Very few people, you know, have the opportunity to do that. What we're asking them to do is be able to find teamwork, to be able to work with um, a group of people, to be able to have some pressure put on you, to understand what it means to win, to understand what it means to lose. Um, you know, and I think baseball's greatest gift is to to be able to uh, to teach you. And every Hall of Fame Red Fordham has experienced those types of things. And I think if you ask most of them, they've been successful, not only because of the education that they've got at Fordham, but because they're experienced in playing uh, high-end athletics there as well. Well, you've been a gift to Fordham. Uh, Bobby, the uh, floor is yours. Sum up your Fordham experience and what you would like to say to the Fordham community. Um, you know, I, I, I think I'd just like to, to thank, you know, Fordham for, um, helping shape and, and, and mold me into the person that I am uh, today, both as a, uh, you know, professionally, you know, a, a, as a father, as a friend, uh, as a teammate, um, 
you know, there, there's a lot of valuable lessons that I learned coming into to Fordham as a scared kid from, from Cleveland, Ohio, uh, to maybe having a little bit of a, of a chip on my shoulder and to, in typical New York fashion, leaving, uh, the, the, the campus, but, um, with a well-rounded background, uh, I, I think so, you know, a, a lot of what I'm doing today and any success, uh, that I may have, um, you know, a, a lot of it goes back to my, to my three years. Uh, and my only regret is not having the fourth, um, you know, complete, uh, to, to do so. And, you know, just, uh, just a humble thank you. Uh, we're humbled to have you and wish you nothing uh, but the best in life, you and your family. Thank you, Bobby, for being with us. This production has been aided and abetted by Athletic Director Ed Cull, Assistant Athletic Director Kara Field, and the indispensable and incomparable Joe DeBarry, member of the Sports Information Directors Hall of Fame. As a great Hall of Fame broadcaster Ernie Harwell once said, I think I've done all the damage I can do. Please note no animals, especially rams, were harmed in the production of this Zoom cast, nor any special effects used. And when all is said and done, there's nothing left to say or do. Thanks so much for putting up with me, everybody. And we'll see you next time on Ed Randall's Talking Rams. <laughs>